I'm Robert Bruce Thompson. This is the Home Scientist video series brought to you by Makershed. This is the fourth of six segments in which we'll show you how to use various methods to reveal latent fingerprints. In the first three segments, we looked at iodine fuming, ninhydrin, and superglue fuming, all of which are general purpose techniques used to visualize latent fingerprints on porous and non-porous surfaces. In this segment, we'll look at gentian violet development, a very specialized technique that's used only to develop latent prints on adhesive surfaces such as sticky tape. As you can imagine, sticky surfaces present special challenges. You can't use ordinary fingerprint powder because the powder adheres at least as well to the adhesive as it does to the prints. Fuming methods yield poor results, as do chemical development methods. Some specialized powders can be used in a water slurry to develop prints on adhesive surfaces, but in this situation, gentian violet often gives the best results. In this video segment, we'll use the gentian violet solution provided with the Maker Shed Forensic Latent Fingerprints Kit, FORKD. Okay, let's get started. You can treat the specimen by spraying it or immersing or floating it in a gentian violet solution. Spraying can be messy, but often yields the best results. I'm using a fingertip sprayer from Walgreens that sells for three for a buck. First step is to dilute the gentian violet solution. The concentrate in the kit is 1%, and we need a 0.1% solution. Incidentally, you can also get the 1% uh, gentian violet at Walgreens for about uh, 3 bucks for a 1 ounce bottle. It contains 9% alcohol, but uh, that's fine once it's diluted. So, since we need a 0.1% solution, I'm diluting one part of concentrate to nine parts of water. I'll start out by transferring three milliliters of the solution. One milliliter is the top line on the disposable pipette. So I'll fill that up three times and transfer that to the sprayer bottle. Now I've already measured out 27 milliliters of water. So I'll add that to the sprayer bottle to give me 30 milliliters of 0.1% solution. Incidentally, whether you spray or immerse, you can save the uh, dilute solution and reuse it indefinitely. Of course, the big problem with sticky tape is that it's usually stuck to something. I'm going to make a specimen here by tearing off some tape. and sticking it to a beaker. And I've just handled the tape normally. I didn't make any attempt to leave fingerprints or to not leave fingerprints. So, the likelihood of success is higher if the tape is stuck to something smooth like glass or plastic, but prints can sometimes be raised successfully from the tape, uh, even if it's stuck to a porous surface like paper. Okay, so we'll remove our specimen and be very careful in removing the specimen. The uh, fingerprints on a tape specimen are most likely to be near the ends of the specimen where someone gripped it. So try to avoid touching those areas as much as possible. Now the next step is just to spray the specimen. Make sure the whole surface is covered with the gentian violet solution. And then we'll allow it to sit for one to two minutes for the dye to take effect and uh, bind itself to the fingerprints. Uh, if it starts to bead up on the surface of the tape, you can spray, respray periodically. Okay, I'm back and I've been respraying and gently running the gentian violet solution over the sticky side of this tape. So let's go ahead and see what we have. I'm going to go ahead and just pour off the excess gentian violet solution into the beaker. Then again, it can be returned to the bottle. And the next step is to rinse it gently with water. Oh, 
Okay, I don't know if it is visible or not, but there is one distinct fingerprint showing a great deal of ridge detail right down here at the corner near where I grasped the tape to pull it off. The rest of the surface uh, has a few lines that probably aren't visible on the video. But that is a fragmentary or partial print that may actually be useful in terms of determining who left the print. Now, if you want to, if the prints come up insufficiently dark, you can retreat with the gentian violet solution. Uh, sometimes you'll overtreat and uh, the prints will be visible but uh, very low contrast because the whole surface of the tape has assumed a violet tone. In that case, you can use one molar hydrochloric acid as a clearing agent and you just have to be careful using that because you may clear not just the background but the prints themselves. For more information about gentian violet development, see Forensics Lab Session 8.6 in the Make Science Room. As we've seen, gentian violet development can yield excellent results for latent prints on adhesive surfaces, particularly light-colored ones. Even with dark backgrounds like black plastic electrician's tape, prints developed with gentian violet are often clearly visible under cross-lighting. In the next segment, we'll take a look at another specialized latent fingerprint development method, acidified peroxide which is used to develop prints on brass surfaces such as cartridge cases.